In previous videos, when we looked at Unix, we used SigWin, a program that could be installed on Windows. We used Linux and Solaris to introduce Unix. Now, many have complained those are not real Unix, and there might be an element of truth in it. However, the, our purpose was to introduce basic Unix concepts and commands, and for that purpose, SigWin Linux was appropriate. And today we're going to actually look at one of the more obscure Unixes, such as AIX. So if I type in, type in the command uname-a, it shows we're on an AIX system. This command uname identifies the system. Now it's very unlikely that the average beginner user would have access to AIX or HPUX or the other so-called real Unix systems. So my goal is really not at this point to teach AIX or to introduce any of the more obscure Unix. So we're going to stick to Linux, OpenSolaris, and so on, and more readily available flavors of Unix. However, today, we're going to show the similarities and differences between some of the um, real Unixes, and today we chose AIX. So if I type pwd, a command I've shown before to print working directory, we see it shows our location on the file system. ls, date, cal, 11.2009, shows us a calendar, clear, and so on. Now, let's look at f configuration files. Typically, Unix uses ASCII text files. So, if I use the filter grep, which I've shown before, and I grep a username from the Etsy password file. Now, pa the Etsy password file does not actually contain passwords. At least it doesn't anymore. It used to. Now it just contains the user account information. So we filtered out using the grep command this user. And we see some information about the user, his home directory his programming environment or shell and we notice that each piece of information about this user is separated by a colon. This could have been another character. For the password file it's the colon. Now this type of information or entry in a text file such as Etsy password is called an ASCII flat file. Another ASCII flat file that's used in the Unix configuration is the Etsy group file. Let's look at the contents of that file. And we see more information. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. And let's look at a different type of ASCII configuration file on AIX. The Etsy file systems file is a different types of type of text ASCII file called a stanza file. Now a stanza file, each stanza is a stanza, the stanza file format is different. It does not contain information separated by delimiters such as colons. Each stanza is a record. So there's different labels and values. There's attribute and value pairs. Let's look at an example. This is going to scroll off the screen, so let's pipe it to more. There we have some comments. And if we hit the spacebar to move down, we'll see different values. Here's the label or attribute and here's the value and so we could see the difference between these two file formats and on AIX 
this is used quite extensively. So this was the Etsy security, Etsy file systems. There's also the Etsy security user file and so on. And let's go ahead and clear the screen. If I type PS, I see that I'm using the corn shell, which you've probably not seen before, before we use the bash shell. And uh, this corn shell is very similar to bash in terms of programming, but in terms of general use, it might be a little confusing. For one thing that's different, if you hit the up arrow, nothing happens. Typically in bash on Linux, the up and down arrows go back and forth through commands that you've used previously. Um, this does not exist in the corn shell. In order to get command history, one thing you may want to do is type the command exec ksh minus o vi. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. Exec ksh minus o vi. Now, you may have seen that I put a pound sign in front here. That's because I already executed this command before and I didn't want to execute it again. Any Unix command, whether on Linux or AIX, allows you to do this. For whatever reason, you may want to do it. If you put a pound sign, it'll execute the line and bring you back to a new line where you could execute more commands, but this didn't actually take effect. It just kind of went through the motions of doing it without actually doing it. So let me show you the result of this. Let's clear the screen. If I hit the up and down arrows, nothing actually still happens. But if I hit the escape key, I could move through my command history by using the K and J key. So you may want to ask why K and J? Well, it has to do with another program called VI, which I may or may not have shown you yet, but I will in the future. This VI that was specified here uses the K and J key to move back and forth through a file. So that's it for what I wanted to show you on the command line for AIX. And there's many more specific AIX commands. For example, if I, there's a file in my home directory called smit script. If I look through here, I will see this command, lsvg, or this command. If I try this lslpp, what it's done is listed the software packages on the system. List software products. In case you didn't see what I did, I just ran the man, man command on that. And last thing before we go, there is actually a command called smit or smitty, which is popular in the AIX world. It's a menu system that allows you to go through and do stuff such as any kind of system administration software installation without actually knowing uh, any Unix commands. If I wanted to add a user, I could go in here and add a user and so on. Now, in order to exit back to the command prompt, I will say F10 to exit or F3 to go back one step. If I hit F3, nothing happens. So I'll try escape 3 instead and I see that's working for me and I'm all the way back out. So that is AIX in a nutshell and now you've seen our so-called real Unix.